Iburu, Iboya, Ibuche, everybody in Cyberland. It's your fair babala. At least I hope so. Omo Odum, Odileke, coming at you with a good one. A really good one, alright? This video here is to give thanks. To say, Ma Farafum, I got you. Why? Because November 16th, within the Afro-Cubano faith, we give representation and we give love to Agayu. Okay? Agayu. Ma Farafum Agayu Mufuru Bale to all those um, Allah Agayus that are out there. Much love to you. But here's the thing. You notice I gave respect, Mufuru Bale, right? To all the Allah Agayus out there. What does that mean? In order for us to give thanks to our guy, you and understand who our guy you is and celebrate our guy you, we need to understand who is our guy you. We need to understand that our guy you, okay, is more than just the representation of the volcanoes. It's deeper than that. Our guy you gets the misnomenclature of being the father of Chango or the brother of Chango depending on what pataki you hear from me whether it's in Dilegun or whether it's Ifa or it doesn't matter okay um, I want to talk to you on the perspective of Ifa because again I'm a Bawalao I'm not a Santero okay so therefore I'm not gonna speak Dilegun I'm gonna speak Ifa and on Agayu's day, I want to honor him by bringing some clarity to those out there from my perspective and through the eyes of Ifa. Agayu. Agayu to me, okay, is no different than any other Ocha that gets crowned in the head. Agayu has the representation. And it should have the respect to be crowned on somebody's head. So through my perspective, through my perspective, Agayu's children are crowned Agayu, not Chango. My perspective, through Ifa. Many will argue, but then giving you my perspective and why you say. Because Agayu... Okay, through tratados, through paperwork that's older than dirt, older than me, the method to the madness exists. Is it easy? No, not one bit. I got you, I would say, is just as challenging to crown as it is. Oya, Elewa, I got you. Very, very, very difficult to do within the Delegu. The reason why I talk about the Ocha in that manner, and I'm not going to get any deeper, is because of the ceremonies that Baba allows have to assist within Ocha in order to ensure that our Gayu is being crowned properly. And when we talk about some of the aspects of Ifa, right? Why are Bawala so interested in Agayu? And why are we so invested in pre-ceremonies to the pre-ceremonies to ensure that when Ocha goes through their process, they are crowning one, a true son or daughter of Agayu, and two, that is done properly. And when I say properly, for those who know the secrets, you have you need at least 16 days before you go into the room of Ocha in order to truly do and I got you. There is things that are happening behind the scenes before that room even is, is, is even built. True story. Baba Laos need to invoke. Okay? That means we have to do Odun. We have to do it on a tablero in order to invoke Agayu and ask, is that person truly your son or daughter? Does that person... And then we got to call Agayu. 
and bring him down. That force, that power. So tell me, how important is Agayu? And should we not take a deeper look into Agayu? I give you the perspective from the side of Ifa. Agayu is the son of Olofi and Oroinia. Okay? And when I say that, think about it. Olofi, wow. The master of ceremonies, the, the Orisha himself. Some may even uh, revere him as, uh, uh, as the governor of this world. Um, you know, an essence of God, of Olodumari. A lot of different things when you talk about the son of Olofi. Think about it. So who is he? Agayu is the volcano. We can go with that, right? And we can and we understand that Agayu, through research and study, was born under the moonlight. One. And two, he was also born through the sound of the earth. And the lava and the hot rock, molten lava that travels through the earth. And his birth created nothing different than when a baby comes out of the womb. Right? When the plates on the earth, right, underneath the waterbed hit each other and create that volcano, does it not represent the womb of a child coming out of the mom? I got you. Wow. When you start to put it into perspective, you get to see it a little differently. And under the moonlight? Hmm. What does that mean? I would have to refer you back to I got you. I got you's representation in numbers is the number nine. Who else is number nine? Oh, yeah, maybe. Would anybody question Oya's connection with the Egum? No. No. So therefore, why do we question the connection between Agayu and an Egum? So therefore, let's think about that a little bit. Agayu carries nine of very specific things inside his Sovera, right? Agayu has patakis, and I will give you one within Ifa Oyekun Birosu that talks about when the Babala was trying to find Egun, and in order to, to do whatever he wanted to do, and Elegbara stops him and says, Hey, if you want him, you gotta go to get to the Eguns, you gotta go through Agayu. Wow, that right there tells you a lot. To get to Egun, you got to go through Agayu. Which then leads you in that same pataki to Osain. We can talk about Osain all day. But isn't that an interesting fact? There's a pact between Agayu and Osain. When we talk about Agayu, we also talk about that there's Odums with an Ifa that talk about how we feed Agayu with Odudua. Mm. Tell me again, Agayu. Something to do with the Egun. So therefore, there's a strong pack there. Then, let's take it one step further. We talk about Agayu. And we talk about the fact that we do within Ocha, okay? And I'm not speaking about Ocha, I'm just speaking about the ceremonies and the aspects of the ceremonies. They do what's called a Sarasa ceremony in order to keep the Eguns at bay. Interesting or not? Agayu is a very mysterious being. But now, I'm really going to put you into a twist. Agayu, Agayu has a pack with Orisha Oku. Orisha Oku, 
We talk about the dirt. We talk about the plows. We talk about digging in, okay, digging in to the ground. And we talk about Agayu, who originated from underneath the ground, underneath the water, the, uh, the floor of the ocean. And those plates, when they hit, created the volcanoes. Agayu and Orisha Oku go hand in hand. So Agayu, a volcano, birthed from the very essence of the earth, packed with Odudua, Egun, Orisha Oku, born under the moon, the moon, Achopua, Mafarafu Achopua. That's Agayu. That's Agayu. And on his day, I think it's important to understand who Agayu is. And understand that within the perspective of Ifa, we have a lot of respect for Agayu. We have a lot of respect for Ocha. But with that said, again, I can talk all day. And I can talk about the influences of Aga Agayu and his children. Agayu's kids... Because of how they play both sides of the field And we talk about the land of the Egun And we talk about earth And we talk about the plates And we talk about Orisha Oku And so on, so on, and so on Okay They're very, very humble And they're very passive But the same way they flip from one side to the other Egun and land of the living They can also be the opposite Very aggressive Okay And not so humble Arrogant to a certain extent And we need to be conscious of that Because at the end of the day Osolbu is Osolbu right? And we need to understand our character as people Reflect our character of our Ori And we need to learn But with that said That's a lot about Agayu Stories about Agayu um, little bits and pieces of Agayu But I always want to end it with I appreciate each and every one of you And do not forget Agayu's feast day Okay Is today November uh, 16 No matter what And then also When November 16 comes Some of the Adi moves That we give to Agayu We give pineapple uh, We give cornmeal with okra Alright those are two very special Adi moves that we like to give Agayu. So with that said, hopefully you take this information, you, you, you get it deep into your soul, and those things are important. So with that said, give me a like, give me a share, shoot me an email, leave me a comment. Iburu, Iboya, Ibuche, everybody in Cyberland. There it is. Agayu. Mafarafu Agayu. Un furbale a gai. Ache.